the digital era is not an era of equality and it cannot be if uh, if we see one in three women experiencing violence if 55% uh, of women say they've experienced sexual violence and we know that a lot of it is more likely to happen to women online than it is uh, likely to happen to men if uh, as Katia mentioned the funding goes to male teams if uh, there's less than 8% female CEOs all of these are the numbers which are Sometimes the invisible iceberg, sometimes it's a bit more visible, like the 16% pay gap, for instance, that we have uh, in the EU, all of which is basically painting the picture of where is the um, engagement that we uh, should be looking at. Then we go to Lucia. Uh, Lucia, so let's let's uh, talk about history here as well with you, because you see, for the first time in history, we have a, a woman leading the European Commission. This is really like like uh, well, it's not breaking news, but it is definitely a turning point in our history. And we also have a commissioner fully dedicated to advancing equality in the EU. Also, this is for the first time, but. Could you explain us, maybe, the, the audience, could you explain what exactly is the Commission doing to make sure that the digital era is also the equality era here in Europe? So we've seen the examples uh, happening in all areas of the society. And as you're, say, as you're saying, we are now in the historical moment where the European Commission for the first time ever has been given this political mandate obviously with the President Ursula von der Leyen, with the Commissioner Helena Daly being appointed to be exclusively in charge of equality agenda which is the first time ever in history and so uh, maybe some of you if you're following this topic you've noticed that in March this year the Commission adopted its gender equality strategy which is uh, a very a big political achievement for us because it outlines the roadmap that we will be working on in the next I mean in these five years of this mandate and the scope is really broad it goes from as I was saying violence a lot of which uh, happens also in the online space and we might go into it uh, we've already touched upon a little bit on the, on the structured sexism also then it's the equal access to opportunities across all sectors of the society so that women can fully uh, use their talent. We know that 85% of purchasing decisions globally are impacted by women. So let's think about how this translates into competitiveness of European businesses. If we know that they do not use the, the intellectual capital, the values, the way of thinking that women represent, if we don't use that in the ways we design products and services, then the strategy um, looks obviously also at the, um, at the numbers game is the pay gap, pensions gap, and then we also dig deeper into areas which are more relevant for the digital domain that we are looking at today, such as skills, the access to STEM degrees, stereotypes, biases, promoting online entrepreneurship, um, etc, etc. There's a lot and all of it is somehow very interconnected, so it's difficult to go into one of these areas, but I think it's um, yeah, as you're saying, important to have this conversation and, and manage to move the best practices from one um, area of society to another and also work at all levels, as, as Kyla was mentioning, working with academia, working with businesses that Katia is representing. Um, and also looking at Hannah's uh, face, I'm, I'm thinking about another number, which is 39% of members of the European Parliament, which are women so again we are not representative in politics either so that's also a big uh, field to be looking at what is the gender equality uh, that is being um, ensured in all kinds of decision making that we're doing in politics and in business to make sure that the society is equally represented so you frequently say that every job is an ICT job these days right it's a view obviously which i fully agree everything is digital in one way or another however still not even half of these jobs are done by a woman so what do you think that is keeping women professionally away away from tech uh, does the current makeup of the of the online ecosystem and here i am obviously mostly referring to social media play a role in relation to which jobs we choose for for ourselves 
Yeah, it's a very interesting question. And I'm thinking how to most intelligently answer to the why question, because I really have the impression that we've been discussing this for years, and maybe some more senior people for decades, and it feels like the advancement hasn't been there. So uh, it's, uh, we've touched upon so many of the reasons so far of this vicious circle of stereotypes bias is the bias is that we are educated with since we're small and then the absence of a good quality career advisory in schools which then puts the girls and boys into further boxes which then prevent them for jumping into the more probably non-typical career path then is the absence of the role models which in my view is not just a question of role models but the true career sponsors people who really hold your back and who pull you further because uh, listening to all these stories of uh, uh, of Cheryl's and Marisa's on the other side of the ocean is very exciting but when you when it's not relatable enough when it's not a woman that you can go for coffee who can really give you targeted advice and support you in looking for that next job opportunity or helping you growing your business further or raising that funding it's really gonna stay as slow as it is so um, very often although I'm always speaking on behalf of of the regulator of the policy making body of the EU. I'm always kind of trying to invite us to consider what is our individual roles in all of this, because the policies are there, the frameworks are there. We're spending a lot of money on all kinds of grants, are doing awards and trying to do um, online campaigns to promote and advance the progress. But I think it's really extremely important that every one of us shows up in support of the issue. And it can be in holding somebody accountable when we see harassment. It can be asking our friends and colleagues about their recruitment practices and exactly as much they have invested into working with their ISs. It's uh, engaging in online conversations. Yeah, and that's where your question about social media comes in where I think it's one of the um, yeah, tricky parts of the advancement of the women in tech, where tech is there allowing us to have bigger access to opportunities, but at the same time, it's holding so many women back from showing up simply because of the communication culture that's happening out there. Um, we've seen maybe uh, Hannah can share that or not later, we've seen research confirming the massive extent to which women politicians are targets of threats and harassment. And this is again, just the tip of the iceberg. Myself, I was running in the campaign last year and ever since whenever I post anything on social media and it can be a harmless post about an invitation to an event like this, the avalanche of attacks that I received there, it really takes a lot of individual mastery and support of your community, which supports you in flowing through that effort to bring out certain kind of career path or product or service or whatever you're trying to communicate online. And so, yes, I think it's really important that we are much more conscious of uh, how much risk comes with it. And then we invest in the individual abilities of the women who are trying to show up more in the social media space uh, to give them the tools and the capabilities to deal with it. And this then applies to entrepreneurs, politicians, journalists also. The European Commission launched a big campaign last year, um, hashtag digital respect for her, where again, we're trying to uh, bring attention to this and kind of make people aware that there should be zero tolerance to this online and offline, but we're not there yet. And we're not gonna be, if not every single person doesn't show up every single day whenever we're scrolling down and seeing something that we uh, wouldn't want to be seeing or also if we see somebody trying to do great stuff supporting them and cheering them for her thanks a lot for for sharing that because it is true you know when i think of course men experience this as well but when you're a woman and when you post something that someone disagrees with they immediately attack you in another way, right? It's not a disagreement. They attack you in just a personal way. Like, oh, what do you think? Oh, like either it, it goes both ways. Either, oh, you know, you're too pretty for being like with this. Or, oh, where, where do you go with this face uh, to talk about this? It's ob always very disgusting. And it happens uh, to everyone. But especially with like a special, you know, will to, to, to hurt you. To women I think so uh, so thank you for bringing that up I am sure that 
many of our participants uh, have experienced that as well, sadly. Sadly, sadly, sadly. It's a very challenging place to be here, trying to find the common thread, but uh, what is kind of feels uh, for me is kind of coming through the, our interventions and the questions also is uh, the information literacy and the individual empowerment. The, inform the capability to swim through all those information out there is, is the number one skill in the future. And it's very naive to expect that somebody will Google their problem and, and, and the best policy or government and state program is gonna come at them because they're simply too much to be able to swim in that ocean. And so as uh, we've heard the intersectionality, for instance, is a very important principle in our equality work where we're trying to come up with proposals which are not only targeting for instance gender equality challenges but also disability lgbtiq race and other um, features that uh, when combined can further add to the discrimination status of a person in the european union and so it's a very very important uh, principle which then makes it even more complicated for the person to find the best solution uh, for themselves. And so where I'm going to is that it's really the question of the, or the skill of the day that people have to kind of learn is not to expect to find the government, somebody who will provide them with a service which will, for instance, allow them to reskill and shift their careers, because unfortunately it's very hard to do in this era. And it's the responsibility of each of us to build the puzzle for ourselves, depending on where the weaknesses are in our career story or in our individual situation. And that's where all this work obviously is so important and also the sharing across the member states where um, countries like Finland are lucky enough with the government that you've had and you can have a prime minister who holds a press conference just for kids. And then there's countries where um, there's obviously other priorities on the agenda also because of the leadership that uh, there is and so the only thing that we can do as individuals is to show up and try to bring our ourselves into the game and if the for instance the issues of women in tech are close to our hearts then if we support the women who are uh, around us to step up and get into the sector then we will earlier see tech for women benefits having the, the advanced technology benefiting women in all kinds of life situations, be it, be it in their business or be it in everyday lives, as we very well saw during COVID lockdown, all the additional challenges that come with feminization of certain sectors like healthcare and the ability or not of women to uh, to bring uh, all this together. So I guess uh, that's uh, my final hope where I would hope that the more we manage to plug women inside into the world which is trying to define the solutions the more they will be serving the general public the more we will be for instance um somebody was asking about procurement the more we will see gender budgeting and gender factors being factored in how public procurement spending is done the more we will see smart enough data being collected from the public space so that it informs much better our decisions the more we will see this kind of sensitivity being um, felt in the decision making of the justice systems the police i mean every area of the society uh, that we look at the diversity will simply be embedded in the design of the decisions and not just you know splitting the the, the two parts of the world so I guess that's my plea, as I already said. Please just uh, try to think about where is it that each of us can be a bigger agent for that change every day on our own social media, in our own families, our coffee conversations, or empowering the women and men that are mm -hmm. around us.